Laos of what is an unfolding disaster. Reports still emerging from this landlocked country, communist run in East Asia, where a hydroelectric dam still under construction has collapsed and in the process it has unleashed a flood of water on surrounding villages. Uh, it happened in the southeast of the country, in the Sanangse district. This was late on Monday. Uh, what seems to have happened is that the dam's simply given way, and that released uh, what is estimated to be around 5 billion cubic metres of water. How much is that? Well, it's difficult to imagine, isn't it? But we've got some pictures which give us some idea of the impact that is having. There is the watermark there, and people, residents, simply left to uh, take some shelter on the roof itself. The first reports suggest many houses were simply swept away. Hundreds of people are missing, and the Laos News Agency says there have been several deaths. Well, uh, let's get as much detail as we can. Our correspondent, Nick Beek, is following the story from Yangon in neighbouring Myanmar. Nick, uh, we're trying to get information, as you know well, from a country that doesn't that readily provide it, uh, what do we know? Yeah, absolutely, David. The information is still emerging, but the details we do have look particularly worrying when you look at the, the numbers involved. And as you say, the best source comes from the Laos News Agency, which is a government-run state media organisation. And they've been the chief source, really, of what is an unfolding disaster, clearly. More than 6,000 people have been made homeless because of the flooding that was unleashed by this dam bursting last night. In terms of people missing, that's quoted as being hundreds of people, so real concern there. And also there is this confirmation of fatalities. People have died, but as to exactly how many people have lost their lives in this, that's not clear. Also, as you mentioned, the pictures speak for themselves. Some aerial shots that the, the state media have broadcast have put out do appear to show that the scale of the problem they're facing here, severe flooding in six particular villages, presumably the nearest to uh, this particular dam. Well, uh, Nick, what is obvious and inevitable is that there is going to need to be a pretty massive rescue and assistance operation here. I don't suppose for a moment the authorities within Laos itself are going to find it easy to deal with this. Yeah, absolutely. And this is a country which is not the most open. As you say, it's landlocked. And so whether or not they'll simply have the, the expertise they'll need to deal with this, that, that's unclear. We know that the prime minister in Laos has said that he's cancelled all meetings. He's travelling, or certainly he may well be there now in the affected region. And for the local authorities there, this is a huge operation already. They have put out an appeal for water, for medicine, for clothes, anything that could be used to help survivors in this. This, it's going to be a massive operation and you'd imagine that other countries within Southeast Asia would be on hand to try and lend sort of, some sort of expertise because of course we're in the middle of monsoon season here. Lots of countries including Myanmar where I'm speaking to you now affected by very heavy rains nearby Bangladesh, other countries um, well versed in dealing with this but certainly what's unfolding does seem to be a huge operation for the powers that be in Laos. Yeah, Nick for the moment thank you very much indeed and uh, just to reflect again, I want to show you these pictures. These have just come into us, so you're already getting a sense of the numbers who are looking for some sort of help and shelter as they're wading their own way out of the water there. The project itself, interestingly, put together by Korean as well as Thai and Laotian uh, companies, so it may well be that they can all uh, be working together in any rescue operation. So obviously we've got a very tight focus on that for you.